Hello and welcome to The Grey Cricketer on 7, the final show of this Australian summer before we all recharge the batteries before the World Cup and the Ashes. So much has happened in the cricketing world since we last convened viewer out there on the internet. Uh, the Big Bash final has finally been completed. Also, we're going to show you uh, how to lose a game in 10 balls, which might be related to what we saw last night in the Big Bash final. Who knows? Uh, we're also going to review the Australian summer all before we answer your questions using the hashtag Ask TGC. Ian Higgins here with Sam Perry and Dave Edwards. Boys, first off for segment number one, we're going to do a bit of a true or false, yes or no, hot or not. So in relation to the Big Bash final that we saw last night, uh, was it the biggest choke you have ever seen? The biggest choke since Clark and Kadich all those years ago in the Australian cricket <laughs> dressing room. Huge <laughs> choke, one yep. of the biggest I've seen. Yep. Um, but last night in the Big Bash, mm. ball was up there. Mm. It was one of the biggest I've ever seen, he goes. It, it, it harks back to... Iceland in the Mighty Ducks mm. uh, all those years ago, yep. or Shooter McGavin yep. against Happy Gilmore, who yeah. gave up four strokes on the back nine. Yeah. Uh, yep. I think last <laughs> night actually kind of superseded that, or yesterday afternoon, I should say, because the game made way uh, for um, my kitchen rules or whatever they else they show. <laughs> Kerry Stokes' rooms over there. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was an extraordinary, extraordinary um, gas taking from the Melbourne Stars. That's right. the kind of official grade cricket term for mm. it. Um, Cameron White confirmed, speaking to us earlier this morning, that there was a lot of talk in the huddle, the Melbourne Renegades huddle, during the wicket fall, like the, the falls of wickets, mm. that uh, there was a lot of discussion about gas and trucks and whatnot, sure. um, which is a separate issue. He just likes trucks. But right. um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it, was, it was probably the biggest cricket uh, choke I've seen. Great insight into, right. the, into the Renegade circle there. Um, Edos, let me put it to you. Is there anything better than, like, the, perhaps the only thing better than actually winning a game of cricket is the other team losing it for you? And the Stars probably lost that game as much as the Renegades won it. Well, there's certainly nothing better, he goes. Mm. I mean, cricket is a zero-sum game. Yep. We always say that probably too many times mm. each episode. Right. But um, if you can see some suffering from the other team and you also win and you can bask in their collective misery, mm. there's actually nothing better in sport than mm. that. And I think, um, you know, the stars with all the hype and everyone was just seeing this as a fait accompli, mm -hmm. uh, to use a French phrase that I often use, mm. um, just in personal settings. Um, <laughs> you know, they were just going to turn up and, and win it, weren't mm. they? And then the Renegades, you know, they've only hit about three or four fifties all season. Yep. And nice there's a statistic there mm. for, you, for your kids playing at nice home mm. um, and on the internet. Mm. But yeah, I, I was a really, really uh, unexpected outcome for mine, mm. but the hugest choke I've ever seen on or off a cricket field. Mm -hmm. Confirmed hugest choke ever seen. All right, well, now that the uh, the nine-month uh, season, some say not long enough, has finished for the Big Bash, um, I want to ask you guys, Big Bash, uh, BBL 08, mm. don't use the year name, use the, 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 the league mm. year name, yes. um, hot or not this year? It's actually a complex question, he goes, and I know this is just like daytime television, so we shouldn't deal in complexity. No, binary. Uh, I, I come down on the side of the BBL. People's issues with the BBL is because they like the product, they just think it could be a bit better. Mm. I agree with that. I think mm. if they just compress it a little bit more, get some better players, mm. it's an incredible competition. You know, 20 years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, if you were talking about 40 to 50,000 at a domestic fixture, mm. it'd be laughed out of the room, <laughs> heartily, you know? <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, and I'd rightfully say. so, yeah. laughed out of the room, get yeah. out. Um, I mean, so, there's so, so yeah. much fixation on yeah, how we could make something marginally better. We can't mm. just appreciate something. I mean, why do we, I mean, we're always talking about what's the best final structure, what's the best mm. structure mm. or algorithm or thing mm. that we can kind of mm. see through this prism. Mm. Um, you know, there have obviously been commentators talking about how this season has gone on forever, and it has. It mm. really, really has. <laughs> I'm so tired from just watching the games. Mm. But, I mean, mm. if I had to say hot or not, I'd probably say lukewarm, and I know that's mm. hedging my bets, mm. but I want to. Do you think the hot or not question is like a, a problem of capitalism, Dave, yeah. where it's just, yeah. we just want year-on-year -year relentless growth, but it's not actually possible? It, 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 something's going to bust. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it'll be a bubble. I mean, mm. the Big Bash bubble's coming soon, mm. and perhaps this is it. Perhaps mm. this is our dot-com, just mm. for cricket. Well, strap yourself in for the GFC 2.0. Um, mm. uh, last one for our binary section. Uh, Cameron White's gecko-esque roar, mm -hmm. uh, the yeah. guttural roar that we see in the celebration, uh, as you see, just oh my God. caption and caption and caption. Look yeah. at the look at the glee on the young man's mm. face. They call him the you bear, know, but that is just unbelievable. Is it the best thing you've ever seen? Yes look, or no? Just look at that vein. Yeah, it, it nearly <laughs> popped a vein coming out of there. Well, like as soon as they won this fixture, yeah. 
boys, the, the Melbourne Renegades, and rightfully so, uh, got into it. Everything's <laughs> rightfully so. Right. Yeah, in yeah, case yeah. people wonder whether yeah. it was right or wrong, but they got into a huddle. Mm. And Cameron White's like head emerged from it like a gecko with the frills kind of coming out. <laughs> and he roared. Like he almost popped a vocal cord. Yeah. It was like it was a viscerally yes. aggressive roar that kind of, um, I mean, it's on the back page of all the Melbourne yeah. papers today. Yeah. And, and the, the headline is so. Red Roar, rightfully so. Mm. Uh, I, I, I mean, what's the question? What he just a kind of emerged at yeah, the top yeah. there, like, you know, gasping for air, you know, just <laughs> coming out of the sea. I don't know, we've compared him to about three animals there. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. which one closely resembles him in the Well, past. once again, the great cricket is a very important and poignant take on the mm. Big Bash this season. But we are going to review uh, the Australian summer as a mm. whole as yes. we are wrapping up the season. So, Edos, please kick us off with mm. our review of the summer. Mm. Review of the summer here, guys. I mean, it's been a long and painful summer at times. <laughs> and uh, it's stuck <laughs> as a representative of the host broadcaster. Mm. Uh, I thought I'd yeah. just kick that out there. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, it started with India coming here. Yep. Uh, let's forget about all the off-field mm. stuff for yep. a moment. Okay. India yep. turned up. And this is how we were greeting them, uh, News Corp rag. The scaredy bats, they're here and mm. they're scared of us. They're scared of the bounce in Brisbane, mm. yes. scared of the unknown in Perth, yes. and scared of the dark yeah. in Adelaide. Turned out not so scared. Yeah. Mm. I like, a lot of runs. Edos, I like what they've used there. Not only the headline of scaredy bats. In fact, they 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 were so scared that they just completely decimated our bowling attack, mm. which is the best in the world apparently. Um, but they've used the photo there of Ravi Jadeja, who play, who's a spinner, mm. um, who played uh, one or two Test matches in the series as the as the pointer. He was the he was the face of the scaredy bat nature, a yes. guy who batted nine for India in the latter part of the series. So yeah. excellent all round. Started off well. Mm. In the spirit of just random things that we thought were interesting to talk about in the <laughs> summer. Um, the next one we want to, you know, let's talk about the on-field play itself. It was Adelaide, it was session one, Australia out in the field. We didn't know how we'd go. Yes. Uh, and look, we've got Coley in right at the moment. And oh, oh my, we're going from Kawaja, to win we're going to win this series. And Kawaja is going to absolutely dominate. Yeah. Steve <laughs> yeah. Smith, David Warner, uh, who? Look at how they're getting around. They're getting, they're getting absolutely around. around. And they're, and they're doing him. the hair yeah. thing. Langer's the reinstated hair. the hair thing. Hair thing. Uh, yeah. Towson with his hair. What a worldie. Coley's out. <laughs> Australia are uh, still a great nation. Uh, we will not be beaten at home. Yeah. Usman Kawaja is yeah. the next great batsman yeah. to step in for Warner and Smith. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have thought so. Oh, no. well, if anything was as prophetic as that image just then, mm. what, what would be the like the image that would be long lasting for the summer? Yes. Uh, no one has uh, just watched that for the first time. Mm. No, and it even got a little bit weirder from there, lads, mm. um, because obviously it didn't go on to, um, to win that test match. And no. then you've got mm. number three. I mean, it's always mm. been one of those positions in the batting lineup that is held with great esteem. Mm. And uh, we just thought that, um, well, let's just let's just move on. Why don't yeah. we start talking about something that also was also quite interesting mm. in the um, mm. in the season? The well, yard. Hey, well, I mean, let's, we've got the pain and pant thing mm. here, right? This is Tim. This is Tim mm. Payne sledging Rishabh mm. Pant. And the, the, the mm. important thing about this, we're not going to hear it. We're just going to talk over the top of it because we're yeah, more okay. important than the Australian yes. captain. Mm. But um, mm -hmm. is uh, this was the moment when we all decided that Australia was past its bully boy nature, mm -hmm. that right. we finally regained morality because yeah. our Australian captain could actually sledge him in kind of mm. PG rated terms. Mm. This was the kind of behaviour that we wanted from our side, right? Yes. right? Well, what's interesting, uh, Pez, is that we, we haven't actually included the one test victory that we had mm. uh, for 2018. Mm. Um, but this was that kind of the big takeaway that, mm. like, we're good blokes again. Uh, yeah. And look we're at that. that. That really kind of lit up social media <laughs> for mm. a day or two, didn't it? And rightfully so. Mm. Um, uh, Pan and Tim Payne's wife having a great mm. little time there mm. at, at Parliament House, I think. I Parliament think House, Richard Pan agreeing so. to babysit Tim Payne's yeah. children. Uh, your friend's coming up next, Dave, mm. I believe. My friend, yeah, mm. my friend Manus Labushakni or Labushane, depending on how you would want to say his name. Mm. Um, apparently, there's options there. Uh, he was selected to bat three for Australia. Number mm. three has always been a position of great esteem. I mean, mm. the position of Bradman, the position mm. of Ponting, other yep. blokes perhaps mm. played three as well. Mm. Played three, mm. yeah. Mm. This is the yep. first time we ever talked about cricket. Yep. Mm. Um, but he, he kind of rocked mm. us as yeah. cricket lovers and connoisseurs mm. and, and people who respect the sanctity of the number three position, mm. didn't it? Labushane became, or Labuskakni, I should say, became uh, the symbol of the decline of Australian cricket. I mean, yes. until this point, uh, number three was his culturally revered position, obviously Bradman, mm. um, Neil Harvey, uh -huh. uh, David Boone, yes. Ricky Ponting, yes. now Labu Skuckney, batting three, bowling leg spin for Australia. Um, that was when we realised, you know, going into the SCG test, etc., yeah. that like we really needed Smith and Warner back. Please come back. There's only 54 more sleeps. 
Yes, uh, spot on. I, I think the thing, <laughs> about, the thing about Marnus is like, he was a representation of all those things, but never really did that badly at any point. Well, we yeah. he, he never completely failed yeah, any no, point. Yeah. But we just yeah. needed a face to pin mm. all our terrible, you know, mm. all the terrible things that happened in the previous 12 months. Oh, it was that we, face. Exactly, and we've done that. Yeah. And we've okay. done exactly. With glee. In contrast, let us talk about probably the greatest performance through the summer, slightly earnestly. Um, yeah, here he is. This is uh, Chiteshwa mm. Pajara, um, absolutely yep. dominating the Australian tech. Uh, on Australia's home soil in a situation where no Australians really could. We got sick of the mm. sight of him. He's, he's, he's Donald Trump's wall, his Rahul Dravis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he absolutely could not be uh, defeated. And mm. I guess I've got a question for you guys. Um, if you could just hold my oh, yeah. um, board here. Uh, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? Are you someone's granddad at the SCG trying <laughs> to look through his binoculars? Or? No, I'm not. Yeah. I'm actually Chiteshwa Pajara. Mm. I'm holding ice oh, okay. packs under my eyes because they hurt so much because I watch the ball like a hawk. Mm. Yep. You're using Justin Langer's uh, coaching techniques there. Oh, am I right? Us. Oh, no, so that was the, uh, Great the, minds. The article, <laughs> the article that was released in the Good Weekend a couple of weeks ago. I don't know why the Australian Bowls didn't try bowling at his pads more. Yeah, good point. No, yeah. Mm. no they're not good there. Why didn't they um, bump him? <laughs> and, and probably the biggest story of the year for mine would be, and I'm, this is probably going to rock you both mm -hmm. and the people at home, Whoa. the introduction of the bat flip in yeah. the BBL. Oh, there, we there we go. This is an OH&S yeah. problem. <laughs> um, this is what can happen with the bat flip. They didn't think that through. Um, but that replaced the coin toss. And some yeah. saw it as a marketing gimmick, but I saw it as 2000 and now. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is so yeah. right now. Mm. Yeah. Don't you think? The only problem is that it wasn't saying uh, hills or flats. Was it? It was... Uh, uh, oh, that weird roofs. Melbourne roofs, thing. roofs, roofs or flats? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. though both sides were flat, yeah, uh, for 50-50 purposes. Right. I think you know. Originally, I was like, "What's going on here?" Yeah. You know, yeah. like the game's being desecrated by yeah. the court, from Desecration. the court. Yeah. But there's so many great things with Religious. the bat this year. Mm. That moment just there was incredible. Uh, there was another time I think an AFL mm. footballer like mm. threw it onto the roof. Yeah, uh, yeah. At, yeah. At, 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 at Optus Stadium there, um, Moses yeah. uh, refusing to call it um, roofs. Mm, um, that's right, and yeah. same as Shane Watson as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, right. all, these, so. all these great right. things wouldn't have happened mm. this year in the Big Bash no. if, if we were just using the traditional coins. No. So I say fair play. Mm. Uh, one of the great wins for not only the Big Bash, but Australian cricket as a whole. Australian cricket <laughs> as a whole. Now let's talk about Indian cricket, and one of the great okay. fathers of Indian cricket is, mm. of course, M. S. Dhoni. Yes, and he came yes. over for the One Day series, <laughs> and he just. <laughs> Dad, yeah, dadded us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah, daddy. Yeah, he was yeah. dad. Yeah. He just came in and played patient, assured mm. cricket, and mm. finished us off. Just the absolute closer. Mm. All of his. I don't know how old is he. Is he forty? Mm. He's probably about forty. He's dad. Um, he's mm. basically dad. Yeah. He's, he, he's the Indian. Mm. The dad of cricket for yeah. India. Well, yeah. I can't you've got another word. Well, once someone's your dad, you don't yeah. know. Well, he's your father. Yeah, he's your biological father. I don't know what to say anymore. I don't know what to say. Well, I started calling him MS Daddy. So yeah, that, no, was, okay. that was, a, I mean, just what a clip, like there was, in, going into the ODI series. You should have used that when he was out here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he just thought of it, just yeah. Yeah. But like, I mean, uh, when he came out here, there's a talk in the Indian, you know, circles, mm. like, would he go to the World Cup? Mm. He's just absolutely, you know, he's just, he's fathered us. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> MS Daddy. He fathered us. Yeah. MS Daddy, name of the show. Um, mm. Okay, moving on to another one day international mm. legend of the mm. game, one of our own, Glenn Maxwell. Bradman. Oh, yeah. Um, he can do anything, this bloke. He can he can hit the ball anywhere, yeah. any part of the ground. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. put at the number seven position yeah. seven. in the ODI team. Yeah. Mm. Wasted talent or mm. good positioning by Justin Langer? Well, yeah. I'll, I'm going to say that Glenn Maxwell is a generational talent whose um, success has been kind of squandered. Um, right. That's because clearly Like he the mining boom. We <laughs> squandered those mining dollars and now we're in trouble as an economy. Yes. That's exactly right. Well, I mean, yeah. Glenn uh, Maxwell's the mining boom. I thought Kevin Rudd's mining tax was actually an elegant tax, but he, anyway, um, <laughs> um, he's Kevin Rudd. But uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I'm, I'm a Team Maxwell guy from a cricket perspective. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, he obviously couldn't get any daddy position. I mean, Donny came in at seven as the daddy. Mm. Glenn Maxwell couldn't do the same thing. Well, we've said for a while that the best batsman in your team always does bat at seven. True. Uh, Glenn Maxwell was the international, he was the Australian T20 player of the year. Mm. So one of the best guys going around. In an era where we're just scoring so many mm. runs, where we have, we have options everywhere, mm. you know, numbers one yeah, through yeah. 11. Mm. So we thought we'd put the best batsman at number seven. So from a gross lack of success of the Australian cricket team to um, people who actually did succeed, let's talk about okay. uh, the women. Let's talk specifically about Elisa Healy, who, yep. to my mind, came up with the absolute, uh, well, the moment of the summer, the best piece of cricket mm. I've seen this summer, and possibly yep. for the decade, what a stop. Yep. That's <laughs> Sophie Molyneux getting the ball in there. Yep. Incredible throw, and the turn of throw. Mm. There it is. Oh, and the shaky camera as well. I just wanted to see it and one more time. she's done it. 
So, Pez, I got a moment with this. So, I was trying to think, like, do you remember Pat Cummins' run out in Adelaide? I remember, so, yeah. Yeah, like, the, the last, yeah. like, right. last, like, five minutes or of the yeah. day. Mm. Like, there was an element of that where it's, like, it's unbelievable skill. Mm. But there's still a bit, like, it was a bit fluky. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. unbelievable athleticism, mm. the ability to, like, mm. hit the stump. But, Side on. but that, like, everything about that is just, like, rehearsal skill mm. practice mm. over and over again. Mm. And it's actually, like, legitimately my moment mm. of the summer. Mm. Wow. True. Yeah, yeah. Very much so. And then in onto this is a wonderfully um, rhythmical show. Yeah. Uh, onto one the, take though. To I, I think I think probably one of the best things that happened this summer for the Australian cricket team was that we finally did unearth a batsman mm -hmm. uh, of some note. That yeah. person is Curtis Patterson, yep. who did uh, bring up a hundred mm. in his second fixture. He looked great in his yes. first. Oh, he had to bat with the tail. Uh, yep. He was nearly out first ball yes. against Sri Lanka in this yep. innings. Tough um, it, it was the easiest I mean, chance of the summer of all time, but uh, he did manage to bring up his 100, and I think he's uh, absolutely on the plane to the Ashes yep. and in the top six. Oh, he's definitely on the plane to Ashes, as we can hear a siren in the background yeah, that was hopefully we've got picked go. up um, on the mic. Someone's trying to still ask him. Do that. those runs count? I mean, Monica Oval, mm -hmm. the biggest mm -hmm. road since the Hume Highway. Mm -hmm. um, four blokes hit hundreds mm -hmm. there. It's the mm -hmm. last test before England. Oh, Edo, it's, I just, that to me, that entire innings he just played mm -hmm. is like just epitomises cricket because he was dropped the easiest catch in international yeah. cricket mm -hmm. history by the greatest team ever to play cricket Sri Lanka we'll touch mm. on that in a moment's time mm. he was dropped first ball should never have been given the opportunity he scored a hundred a mm. brilliant hundred he will go to the ashes most mm. likely as you say and like his entire life literally this mm. guy's entire life mm. has been changed by a guy who couldn't catch a cricket ball by someone yes. literally underarming a ball yep. like that cricket is the most ridiculous game do enjoy it <laughs> <laughs> keep watching mm. uh, now another um, possibly a worrying thing that I saw towards the end of mm. the, the series the Sri Lanka mm. series was return to type uh, by the Australians mm. and I'm talking about Nathan Lyons bullying, mm. and I'm going to call it bullying, <laughs> okay, please do. of the Sri Lankan team. <laughs> we started to get on top of these yeah. lads, mm. and uh, it allowed us to get a little bit back to the old days. It's chirpy. Mm. It's chirpy, I don't know Nathan. if Nathan Lyon had read the culture review, or 146 mm. pages of it, mm. um, or however many pages there were in that mm. white paper. But um, he's starting to get a little cocky, and are we, mm. in turn, as Australians, mm. starting to get a little cocky? Yeah, it's it's hard it, mm. it's hard to know if it's ever going to truly go away, isn't it? It's like a little demon that sits within our national character. As soon as we yes. start winning and yeah. get ahead, it's a little glitch. We become, yeah, we become bully boys. Software glitch. I mean, Nathan Lyon is going to probably finish, uh, he will finish as the third greatest wicket taker Australia's ever produced. Oh, okay, so but we can do it. But he still bowls those ones. And it's like, <laughs> you're an off spinner. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's just a bit like, you know, mm. Warner could get away with it, mm. you know, but like, you know. Well, leg spinners I respect because they use like their whole wrist, <laughs> yeah. more yeah. hand yeah. work, mm. whereas yeah, an off spinner yeah. is literally just yeah. using your index finger and middle finger and doing these ones. Now, if that was Adam Zan, or, or you know, Boyce, or mm. you know, what, you know, pick, take, take yeah, your Farwad, Farwad, mm. anyone, yeah, yeah, but you know, anyone. So, so what we're really saying is that, Lion, maybe check yourself whether you're going to bully people despite getting mm. ahead, but then in yeah. turn we will bully you from behind yeah. a camera when you can't check talk to us. You yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Answer your emails, Nathan. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, finally, what I believe to be, and this is quite incongruous, but this is probably the moment of the test summer. In fact, yeah. all mm. of cricket. This only happened a few days ago. Kulsil mm. Pereira, who was at the um, uh, who was at the receiving end of Nathan uh -huh. Lyons sledging, uh -huh. hitting a four to bring Sri Lanka home against <laughs> South Africa, away yes. from home. This is after they were decimated <laughs> by our own country. Look, Look at Steve Rickson, Rickson there. <laughs> Wasn't even watching when Dave scored 100 a couple of years ago, but he's up for that. And Kusil Pereira, 150 odd not out uh. there against probably the best ta attack when they're at home yeah. um, with a famous win for Sri Lanka. Mm, yeah. Like a, a Sri Lanka that is in absolute all sorts as a country, yeah. let alone a cricket team. Yeah. Uh, it's something that's worth noting. I think it was a huge, huge result. Well, it just confuses us even more yeah. so, given that all these teams are losing to each other in, you know, a way. I don't really understand Test cricket anymore. I don't mm. understand the ranking system. Mm. If we can lose to India here, if we can, you know, beat Sri Lanka comprehensively, then they mm. go to mm. then they go to South Africa, the place where mm. Sandpaper Gate happened, and we were humiliated as a country and as a cricketing mm. nation. I just don't know what to think anymore. And Spe I think that's a good way to end the segment. S speaking, <laughs> speaking legitimately, like that footage gives me so much hope for like mm. just like I might play again. Like, yeah, that's, right. how, that's how good that footage is. Like, I, like I, I implore anyone to go onto the internet and watch the highlights. Um, Channel Seven don't have, um, you know, the full broadcast footage or the ODIs. Mm. But like, mm. I mean, like just the, the blame whole, us for that. The whole, yeah, blame yeah, us. we did it. Mm. We did it. That. Seriously, just but do it in the comments underneath this. They shouldn't have sent us to sports. They were nine for two hundred and twenty, chasing three hundred, and a guy just like comes out and just like bombing Stain around. It's insane. One of the greatest innings, right. not only this year of all time, time. all time. Yeah. Um, okay, so. On the back of that, we thought, well, we, if need you're to, still with us. we need to educate the viewers out there in many things in life, but you know, specifically cricket for this uh, for this first season, anyway. So, um, of course, after the um, the 
cataclysm that was the Big Bash final in a stars sense, uh, we thought we might show you how to lose a game in 10 balls, mm. um, TM. So um, Based on the movie, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. I hadn't yeah. picked yeah. up on that until yeah. just now. Good point. Uh, <laughs> so, Kate Hudson, Matthew mm. McConaughey. So this is an education You're always meant to explain the joke, aren't you? That's the comedy. That's how it works. All the best jokes are the ones you have to explain yourself. So please, lads, 10, How to Lose a Game. So th this is based on the anatomy of collapsing. So let's go through what, what this would actually look like. The first thing that happens in a, in a huge collapse, right. like the one we saw the other day, is a basic loss of concentration after a serviceable, serviceable start. It can get to none for 30, get to none yeah. for 40. Yeah. You're sitting in the change room saying, you know, we're going to be doing well. Everything's fine. Basic loss of concentration, edge, whatever it is. There's yeah. a wicket. You're one down. Oh, we're going to be okay. Yeah, we're be so okay. Anyway, everything's yeah. okay. Absolutely. You got mm. yourself out on mm. one for 30. Uh, the second thing that always happens um, is a disputable LBW. So yep. there's an element of a mistake being made by an umpire, or if it is an LBW or a court behind, something's a bit iffy, something's a bit off, and it pretty much just triggers what's to come, a disputable mm -hmm. LBW. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the third one here might be the moment where you just realise, hang on, there's a bit of trouble here, a bit of sandpaper mm -hmm. happening. So, so sandpaper, quick sand. <laughs> 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 and a, that was last year. <laughs> so, um, and it's the catch of the summer. Now this, is, yeah. uh, this can go two ways. It can be a very athletic fieldsman who takes like just the best catch he's ever going to take in his life, which is just a screamer, or it can be a, like an overweight 45 year old bank manager mm. who like, like people, like he takes a sit and everyone's mm. like, he hasn't taken the catch in about eight seasons, that bloke. <laughs> yeah. And there'll be guffaws of laughter around. Guffaws. And that's when you think, mm. well, hang on, it's on here. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So you're about three for, so you were none for 40, now you're about mm. three for sort of 48, yeah. 49, mm. you go, oh, and there's a lot of rumblings in the change room. People yeah. are running and putting yeah. pads on. It's yeah, a panic. whole, there's a lot going on behind the yes. scenes. At this and point. you're starting to, you know, some, someone will steady the ship, and then someone just gets a good ball. Mm. Yeah. He just, he just, got, a, he just <laughs> got a good ball. And this guy, this is, an in, this is interesting because when you're looking at the wreckage of the innings at the end of the day, this person who's kind of, what is he, comes in at number five. Or whatever yeah. he just he tries to separate him or herself yeah. from mm. the collapse by saying look actually i wasn't part of this kind of wave of um yeah. collapsing that went <laughs> yeah. on that none of us could outlier, arrest. Yeah, I, yeah. I just got a good ball i've, yeah. I've been defending i've been practicing yeah. he just bowled a good one just got me yeah. on off thumb mm. off yep. bail whatever yeah. it's good, he'll take good, that to his grave good, good pill mm. just a good pill yeah. mm. uh the next one that happens um and this is when they're fire for it's a stump explosion <laughs> much like the uh the way that aaron aaron finch was dismissed in a bbl yeah. game this season mm. and so much so that the stump actually endangers the wicketkeeper it's just <laughs> it's just cartwheeling towards yeah. me. He has to get out of the way, slips, yeah. And, and yeah, they kind of dive in separate ways, and it's a whole thing. Yeah. And at this point, maybe there's a couple of U's, yeah. or should yeah, I say yeah. U's, yeah. 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 coming yes. up yeah. from the lads. Y I E W. Um, yes. Y I E W is how you yeah. spell that yeah. word. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this is when you know, geez, things are not looking good. Yeah, and at this point, this is when you have the dream that everyone has where you're going to get timed out, yes. you're getting your pads yeah. on at a mm. you know, very slow pace, mm. you hear appeals in the dressing room, you're like, hang on a second, we're in a bit of trouble here, and you can't yeah. get your pads on quick enough because the next wicket mm. is a panic-induced slog. <laughs> so this is where the batsman is just just like they've just completely lost it. Mm, that, uh, yeah. What's going on? I think, well, oh. oh, I'll, just, I'll just hit over the top. Yeah. I know mm. I can, I have the skills to arrest this situation. Mm. We've just lost five wickets yeah. in the space of, you know, say 10 to 15 mm. minutes, but I've got the skills to hit this bowler out of the attack. Mm. I'm going to hit, I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit my way out. I'm going to hit my way out. Dwayne Bravo mm. the other night. Mm. Yes, mm. yeah, get a knee high full toss, get, mm. it through, get it through square leg, mm. and get, get yourself caught at point. Mm. Yes. Uh, the <laughs> panic induced slog is next up. That's right. And that, that's really what confirms that this day is not going your way. <laughs> no, it, a collapse is happening. You're six down, but every Everyone knows the collapse is on. In fact, when that ball's in the air, yeah. you can hear guys laughing yes. before the catch is taken. <laughs> yeah. And that's why the next thing, which is critical to any collapse, yeah. is a comical run out. Yep. Cannot be a collapse without a comical run out. No. We've seen it time and time again. Yeah. Adam Zampa nearly accomplished one yeah. the other day by lodging his bat into mm -hmm. the ground, which would have like confirmed a com the complete comedy of, of, of what was Sunday. Yes. But uh, yeah, a comical run out <laughs> has to happen. It's again where like there's, there's a mix up between both bats when they end up running to the same end, yep. someone ends up falling over. That's and again, as the ball just kind of comes into the keeper, someone just kind of goes, I'll yeah. oh, take him, you know? And then, <laughs> and then as, as, the, as the stumps are taken, everyone just laughs and just laughter. go forwards it's and just runs comedy, into each other. Yeah. basically is what it is. Yes. Exactly. Um, the next one that happens after a comical run out is a filthy half tracker that's caught on the boundary. Mm. Yeah. So at this point, you're just giving away wickets for fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, a leg spinner drops one short. Mm. He's probably bowled about three overs all season. Mm. Mm. Everyone's just laughing at this point. Mm. There's just literally blokes hysterically laughing mm. across the field and in the change rooms. Mm. Um, and yeah, you just get caught on the boundary by the lone fielder on the boundary. Mm. You just pick him out and you're gone. Can I suggest that at this moment as well, for that particular wicket, the filthy, filthy half tracker caught on the boundary, mm. like there might have been the briefest green shoot of a partnership. Like maybe yeah. you've been back for two overs or something, or someone's hit a two, hit and you a, sort yeah. of, and you, or a boundary, mm. and you sort of go, oh, we might be back here, Clinging and then just this, the half tracker mm. just gets caught, and you're like, it's just mm. not our day. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, and then the, the ninth wicket happens, which is a bizarre stumping 
that causes great confusion. Mm. Now this can often be a thing where like an innocuous, like a plane miss happens and then the keeper just like takes off the bales and starts mm. laughing. You yeah. always have to take the yeah. bales and laugh. Mm. That's what wicked keepers do. <laughs> and everyone's just like, everyone's like does this kind of like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And then the umpire's got his finger on the square yeah. leg. And then the number 10 batsman or whatever didn't realize that he was actually batting a foot and a half out of his crease. Mm. Yeah. So it's another bizarre Because they're just, they're just panicking. Uh, you know, like yeah. all, all rationality has yeah. left them. The collapse is well and truly on. And yeah. now he's just standing out of his crease. Literally so it's a, it's a, this point. a mm. more laughter wickets. And then finally, <laughs> the 10th wicket is a, it's a make chip to mid off after a dignified 10th wicket stand. Yeah. So uh, it's, a norm, it's a normal everyday wicket. If you saw it in mm. isolation, you wouldn't realise it's off the back of a yeah. collapse. No. Yeah. Uh, in fact, both players, uh, number 10 and number 11, have put on 30 or 40 yeah. um, so yeah. that they can go back into the change room and smugly look mm. at the rest of their side and, and mm. say, why didn't you do what we could do? We may as well bat up the order. Now we've got to go and bloody bowl and all yeah. that sort of stuff. It's yeah. actually a great result for 10 and 11. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an anti-climax. You've just meekly chipped it mm. to and then you have to walk past the fielding mm. circle as they celebrate wildly. Mm. Mm. And then you kind of shake each other's hands. No one's <laughs> looking at each other in the eyes yeah. at that point. A really like earnest clap from the remainder of the teammates who said, oh, you know, like Nugsy really dug in there yeah. you know, back then. And, and then mm. the, bo the bowls are just com completely indignant. Mm. The guys have scored the runs. Spot on. Mm. Mm. Thanks. All right, well, that's that. <laughs> How to lose a game in 10 balls. Uh, mm. Last segment of the season, lads. Mm. Um, and it's been Sad. a long one. Mm. Um, ask TGC. Uh, as I scratch my nose on live television, mm. uh, hashtag AskTGC. Please don't send any more of these in because we're done for the summer um, and we don't want you to use the internet. Stop mm. using the internet. Okay. Uh, this one comes from Chris Easy at Easy underscore C1. He says, or she says, is it weird that I'm happy to be injured and not playing? No, nope. not at all. I've been there. Nope. Uh, in my last ever grade game for St Kilda, I... Um, wished injury upon myself in the match because I didn't want to play the rest of the season and literally did uh, a meniscus uh, yeah, that uh, match. So I don't know if that's like... Um, witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, something like that, a law of attraction, you know, like manifest destiny or whatever. Um, I, I was in a cast for like three weeks, but um, mm. nevertheless, I didn't have to play again. So, uh, or maybe we're both weird, I don't know. Oh, well, it, gives, it, gives, it gives you a great out yeah, you know, if you're no. injured because you, you have the option to, to play or, you know, do whatever you want on a Saturday. Yeah. Mm. And you're like, oh, well, I would play, but you know. And when you sort of turn up to either like training or Saturday in like your cast kind of a situation, mm. you're kind of given this like dignity from the rest of the club as well. Like, oh, they've come along to support. But like yeah. little yeah. do they realise you're only going for an hour and then you can go back to your life and actually do things that fulfil you and grow you as a mm. person. Mm. That's true. Mm. Mm. Spot on. All right, uh, Tim at Steve OT011. Uh, it's confusing. He uses the hashtag I said you see. What are the top three things to do in your first summer as a retired cricketer? Uh, I mean, top question. three. I mean, there's three. so many things you can do because your whole mm. life has just become mm. available. I would say the first thing is you can enjoy a long breakfast. Yep. Mm. You know, you can have a long lunch. Mm. You can go to the beach. You can see a beach for the yeah. first time. These are all farmers the market. fundamental things. Farmers markets. Farmers market. yeah. Can I start even before Saturday? You can remove anxiety from your life on Great Friday point. afternoon. Yep. Uh, right. it does, that, that creeping anxiety that fills up your entire body and then allows you, like, that <laughs> disallows you from sleeping mm. beforehand or oh, you contemplate failure. Yes. That, could, that goes from your life yes. and it actually mm. is a really healthy thing. I I would yeah. say in reality though, a lot of the people who, you know, in their first summer after retiring actually continue to attend grade mm. cricket matches yeah. and they kind of position themselves as the guy that got out, but they're still there. They're mm. still wasting their Saturdays because they mm. don't know what to do mm -hmm. because they've just wasted every Saturday since the age of 10. I think you can further your career as well by not having to leave work early on Tuesdays mm. and Thursdays for, mm. for grade training, but you won't even get until seven o'clock. Yeah, you might get that place. promotion. Like you, get, you actually succeed in other parts of your life. But of course, you'll still check the grade scores uh, every Monday for four hours until lunch mm. on Monday. So yeah. So you can get money, get grow money. your career, yep. have more energy, yes. more health. Yes. You can also read the paper from front to cover, right. front to back. Like educate for the first yourself. Time. Educate yourself. Yes. Yeah. Read the New Yorker online or something. <laughs> find out what's going on in world mm. affairs. You, get you, do. Do. you only get 10 articles with them. Yeah, um, <laughs> next question from Francis Lang uh, at HFL Vin. Yep. I don't know. Um, <laughs> at Grade Cricketer. What is more of a shock to the senses, going to a Big Bash game at Marvel yeah. or going over the top <laughs> on the first day of the Somme? Hashtag mm. Ask TGC. I'm going to Ooh. throw that to whichever one of you guys was in World War One. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Germany? Is, is mm. the Renegades Germany? <laughs> well, I've seen... No, they're the good guys, aren't they? Are they? I've or seen they the a lot of movies, so let me speak with authority when I say it's, uh, it's the first one. It's Marvel's. Didn't you go to a Big Bash game at Marvel the other night? Yeah, you I did. Yeah. I did. Um, Does it feel like the Battle was it of the jarring? Song? I didn't walk in and think to myself, do you know what, this is actually quite like the, <laughs> this this is like the battle, the battle of the song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in fact, the comparison is probably offensive, uh, mm. to be honest. Yeah. Um, great lest war, we yeah. forget. 
But they are loud, those big bash games, to be fair. They are very loud. Yeah, yeah, I still loud. have like um, the, the Melbourne Renegades. Over, yeah, yeah, still got flashbacks. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> only 33. It's actually, now I'm starting to see the comparison. Okay. Mm. Last one of the summer, lads. This mm. one comes from Rory Dennis. Uh, thank you for your question. Ask mm. TGC Is George Bailey turning up to the ground for a BBL mm. semi on a bike? Mm the most rare unit moment of the season. And here he is on his little bike. He's turned up, obviously his indicating bike. his proximity to the ground by uh, <laughs> arriving on a bicycle. Mm. Is it rare or just good you know, sense and environmentally conscious? So I didn't expect to see that from a guy who just yeah. dislocated his shoulder the match before mm. in the yeah. semi-final. Be riding a bike seems risky yeah. to me. I'm yep. not sure of George's health insurance policies at this stage. Mm. Um, was it rare? Well, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It's a bit rare. But it shouldn't be rare. Mm. We should ride more bikes uh, and kind of help the environment Carbon and climate footprints. that way. I would have thought what Marcus Stoinis wore last week would have been considered quite rare in cricket terms. But again, we thought it was probably one of the most normal things we've ever seen. Mm. More people should ride bikes to games. More people should wear um, outlandish clothes. Mm. Well, there you go. The Grey Cricket on 7. Season 1 done in the can. Um, thank you very much to Channel 7 for putting us on yep. uh, every week. Thank you very much to our producer, Tara Carlon, our executive Sits producer. Sits behind every show and only laughs at a very small amount of things, so we get um, <laughs> yeah. good feedback but on how well we've phone gone. the entire time, which is yeah. I think she's texting. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does everything for us. Honestly, um, we don't prepare well at all. Sam Perry, thank you very much. Dave Edwards, thank you very much, boys. It's been a fantastic summer. Um, will we see you next year? Don't know. I don't know.